So is everyone ready? And the timer? Then let's begin. ISIS executes Christians. Fatal shooting on Oregon campus. Human trafficking in Malaysia. When we hear the news or read the articles of the latest events of human cruelty, we cry out for justice and vengeance. The ancient city of Nineveh is located in Assyria, the same area of the world where ISIS operates today. The Assyrians were the sworn and dreaded enemies of the kingdom of Israel. In the book of Jonah, a reluctant prophet is called to send a message of repentance and forgiveness to the people of Nineveh. But do they deserve forgiveness or vengeance? The book of Jonah, chapters 1 through 4. The word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amittai, Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it the message I give to you. But Jonah ran away from the Lord and headed for Tarshish. He went down to Joppa where he found a ship bound for that port. After paying the fare, he went aboard the ship to sail to Tarshish to flee from the Lord. But the Lord sent upon a great wind, and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. The men aboard took the cargo and threw it into the sea to try and lighten the load. And they each called on their own gods. But Jonah had gone below deck, where he fell into a deep sleep. The captain came to him and said, Get up and call on your god! Maybe he will take notice of us, and we will not perish! Then they said to each other, Come, let us cast lots to find out who is responsible for sending this calamity. And they cast lots, and the lot fell on Jonah. So they asked him, Who are you? Where do you come from? What is your country? From what people are you? Who is responsible for causing all this trouble for us? He replied, I'm Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of the heavens who made the sea and the land. This greatly terrified the men, and they asked, What have you done? They knew already he was fleeing from the Lord, because he had already told them so. The sea was growing rougher and rougher. So the men asked him, Tell us, what should we do to you to make the sea calm down for us? Pick me up and throw me into the sea. And he replied, and it will grow calm. I know now that it is my fault that this great storm has come upon you. But instead, the men did their best to try to row back to land. But the sea grew even rougher and rougher. So they prayed to the Lord, Oh Lord, please do not let us die for taking this man's life. Do not hold us accountable for killing an innocent man. For you, O oh Lord, have done as you pleased. And they picked up Jonah, and they threw him overboard. And the raging sea grew calm. At this the men greatly feared the Lord, and all of them made sacrifices and vows to him. But the Lord provided a great fish so that it swallowed Jonah. And Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. From inside the fish Jonah prayed to the Lord his God. In my distress I called to the Lord. And he answered, From the depths of the grave I cried out, and you listened to my cry. You hurled me into the deep, into the very heart of the seas. All your currents overtook me, your waves and breakers swept over me. I said, I have been banished from your sight, yet I will look again to your holy temple. The engulfing waters threatened me, the deep surrounded me, seaweed was wrapped around my head. To the depths of the grave I sank down, the earth beneath barred me in forever. But you brought life from the pit, O oh Lord my God. When my life was ebbing away, my prayer rose to you, to your holy temple. Those who Cling to worthless idols, forfeit the grace that could be theirs. But I, with a song of thanksgiving, will sacrifice to you what I have vowed, how I will make good. Salvation comes from the Lord. And the Lord commanded the fish, and it vomited Jonah onto dry land. Then the word of the Lord came to Jonah a second time. Go to the great city of Nineveh and preach against it the message I give to you. Now Nineveh was a very important city. A visit required three days. On his first day into the city, Jonah proclaimed, 
40 more days and Nineveh will be overturned. The people believed God and they declared a fast. And all of them, from the greatest to the least, put on sackcloth. When the word of the Lord reached the king of Nineveh, he rose from his royal throne, took off his royal robes, and covered himself in sackcloth. Then he knelt down in the dust. There he let out a proclamation in Nineveh. By decree of the king and his nobles, do not let any man or beast, herd or flock taste anything. But let all of them, from the greatest to the least, be covered in sackcloth. Do not let them eat or drink, but let them call urgently on the Lord and turn from their evil ways. Who knows? He may take notice of us and turn compassion from his fierce anger so that we will not perish. When the Lord saw what the people of Nineveh had done and how they turned from their evil ways, he had compassion on them and did not bring upon the destruction he had promised. But Jonah was greatly displeased and even became angry. He prayed to the Lord, O oh Lord, is this not what I said when I was still at home? I knew you were a gracious God, compassionate and abounding in love. O oh God, who relents from sending calamity. Now, O oh Lord, take away my life. For it's better for me to die than to live. But the Lord replied, do you have any right to be angry? Jonah went to a place east of the city. There he sat down, built himself a shelter, and sat in its shade to wait to see what would happen to the great city. At dawn the next day, the Lord provided a vine so that it grew up over Jonah's head to provide shade, to ease his discomfort. Jonah was very happy about the vine, but at dawn the next day, the Lord provided a worm, and it chewed the vine so that it withered. Then the Lord provided a scorching east wind. The sun blazed on Jonah's head. He grew weary. He wanted to die and said, it would be better for me to die than to live. But the Lord replied, do you have any right to be angry about the vine? I do, he said. I'm angry enough to die. But the Lord replied, you have been so concerned about this vine, though you did not tend to it or make it grow. It sprang up overnight and it died overnight. But Nineveh has more than 120,000 people who cannot tell their right hand from their left, and many cattle as well. Should I not be concerned about that great city? The Lord had mercy on the Ninevites, and he had mercy on Jonah as well by showing him his own wicked heart. Jonah wanted forgiveness for himself, but not for any of the Ninevites. What we need to learn from this is that God's message of repentance and forgiveness is for everyone. We can't say that anyone is undeserving of it because the truth is, we're all undeserving. We need to share God's compassion that all come to knowledge and repentance of Him. We need to take that message such a glorious message of us being forgiven of our sins because of what Christ did for us. A message like that, how can we not share it? Thank you.